Good afternoon to everyone in Brussels and in Naples, as well as to those joining us online. Welcome. From my side in Brussels, I would like to start this uh, operational briefing on Libya by saying that the North Atlantic Council will meet tomorrow, as usual. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Ambassadors from NATO countries and our partners involved in the Libya operation will have a routine meeting in order to discuss the current situation on the ground. This meeting is part of our regular consultations since the beginning of the operation. With regard to when our operation will terminate, I'm sure you are interested about that, I would like to stress what the NATO Secretary General said on Friday. It is premature to set a timetable now. We are very close to the end, but there are still threats to the civilian population. And as long as these threats persist, we will continue with our operation. Key benchmarks for ending the mission, as you know, will be whether or not there are threats to the civilian population, as well as the capability of the National Transitional Council to protect civilians. Termination, it's a political decision which will be taken by the North Atlantic Council after we have made a careful and comprehensive political and military analysis. Any decision by NATO will be done in coordination with the United Nations and the National Transitional Council. And with this, I will hand over to my colleague in Naples, Roland Lavoie. Colonel Roland Lavoie, please, you have the floor. Uh, bonjour, good afternoon uh, to all those uh, joining us here in Naples or in Brussels. Uh, since our last operational update, there were a few changes to the security situation in Libya. Most of CERT is now uh, under NTC control and fighting is limited to a very small area where a few remaining Qadhafi fighters are vainly trying to hold their positions. NTC forces have made significant advances in Bani Walid, both from the northern and southern fronts. As of this morning, it appears that the Qadhafi fighters are unable to sustain significant offensive capability. The NTC was also successful in managing a small-scale clash in Tripoli last Friday, demonstrating their ability to quickly respond to skirmishes using their own means and capabilities to safeguard the civilian population. The situation was stable uh, in the rest of the Libyan territory and uh, territorial waters. Now, NATO's assessment is that despite isolated fighting in Sirte and in Bani Walid, most of the local population in these areas is no longer under threat. Remaining Qadhafi fighters are on the defensive, apparently attempting to avoid capture. They don't control significant populated areas and no longer pose a credible threat outside small pockets of resistance. As the NTC is playing an increasing role in Libya's security, NATO is still committed to fulfilling its mandate. Operation Unified Protector is actively and continuously monitoring the situation in Libya by conducting surveillance operations from air and sea to detect potential threats against the civilian population and being ready to intervene as necessary, as we did on a number of occasions uh, last week. Our ships at sea are also provided a constant presence and continue to enforce the arms embargo. There should be no doubt that NATO remains ready to engage using all necessary force against military assets that may represent a significant threat against civilians in Libya. Our mission may well be near completion, but we will maintain a strong, vigilant posture until relieved of our duties. As a final note, I would like to stress Libya's progress in airspace control. A few days ago, Libya's newly formed Civil Aviation Authority announced that it will take responsibility for controlling aircraft in airspace above Benina International Airport in Benghazi. This decision marks a positive step towards enabling the new Libyan authorities to start rebuilding their country. The Libyan Civil Aviation Authority has taken the decision in close consultation with NATO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, 
and under other international organizations. Although NATO's no-fly zone continues to be enforced, Libyan air traffic control services will now direct humanitarian flights into and out of the airspace in a 50-mile radius around Benghazi. Once NATO's mission ends, Libya's authorities, supported by the international civil aviation community, are expected to assume complete responsibility for Libya's airspace. This uh, completes my uh, brief, Carmen.